Hello and welcome to this episode. You must have been wondering where I vanished after telling you that I will come back with the story of the superstar comedian of Tamil cinema. I must beg your pardon for having not come on screen for a couple of weeks. But today, let's take a look at the first comedy superstar of Tamil cinema, N.S. Krishnan. If you drive down Nagar Kovil, you will come to the tiny hamlet of Uriginaseri, which is a part of Nagar Kovil today. As you go down the main road and you look at your left, you will find this enormous house in a dilapidated condition. When you look at it, you'll be stunned. You'll imagine the grandeur of what this property must have once been. That decorated balconies, the beautiful compound wall, the small pavilion inside, this grand portico which is greeting you, all of it in terrible condition today. When you look up, you will find on the arch, it is written Madhura Bhavanam. This was the house of N.S. Krishnan, one of the greatest stars of Tamil cinema. Krishnan was born in 1908 at Originaseri. He came from a very poor family. His father's name in some records is given as Sudalai Muthu. In some places, it's given as Sudalai Andi Pillai. But N.S. was those initials. Nagar Kovil, Sudalai Muthu, Krishnan. They had no money to send him to a school, but he learned how to read and write by himself. And at a very young age, he became an assistant in a grocer's shop. But his real passion was Tamil drama. In those days, lots of itinerant drama troops used to come to various parts of what was Madras presidency at that time, and they would stage plays. When they came to Nagar Kovil Originaseri, Krishnan would want to go and see it. But he had no money to buy the tickets. And therefore, he hit upon a wonderful stratagem. He would take a push cart with soda water and he would go and sell it inside the theatre while the play was in progress. That way, he'd be able to watch all the plays. He not only watched the plays, he could learn all the dialogues and the songs by heart. And coming back home, he would enact whatever he had seen for the benefit of everybody else. It was 1925, Krishnan was around 17 or so, when the TKS brothers, a very famed troupe, of Tamil theatre. Avai Shanmugam has got a road named after him in Madras. He also has a road named after him in Nagar Kovil because they came from the same area. The TKS brothers troupe came to Nagar Kovil to stage plays. And in those days, it was customary for talent scouts to go and locate young boys interested in drama and bring them to act in plays. Krishnan was one such person. He was brought to join the TKS brothers drama troupe. He was admitted and classes began to teach him the dialogues. Once the teacher had to leave for some errand, and when he came back, he found Krishnan was seated in his place and he was conducting the classes for the rest of the students. He was astounded. He asked him as to how he knew all the dialogues. And Krishnan said, why? I've been seeing these plays for so long. I know all the dialogues. I know everything by heart. I know the songs as well. Many years later, Krishnan would incorporate a variant of this scene in a film where he is a student along with his wife T.A. Madhuram and several others in a guru's ashram. The guru has gone out and is and in his absence, Krishnan takes over the role of guru and he begins to teach the children or the rest of the students a game. The guru comes back and admonishes N.S. Krishnan for doing that and then sends them all away and then sits down and tries the same game himself to see whether he can do it. And so that was Krishnan's way of bringing back an old theatrical memory into cinema. Now, Krishnan was acting serious roles in the TK's troupe. But once, when Manohara, Pamal Samandam Mudalayar's great play had to be staged, there was nobody to play the role of Vasantan, the dim-witted son of the vamp Vasanta Sena. That was the comedy role in that play. N.S. Krishnan stepped forward and said that he would act it. And when he enacted it, the audiences loved it to such an extent that they forgot who was acting as the hero, who was playing the role of the heroine. Krishnan was the star of the hour. Thereafter, it became customary for Krishnan to be cast as the comedian in all of the TKS brothers' plays. Whenever a silent movie was being screened in the neighborhood, wherever they were, Krishnan would spend his hard-earned money, go to the theatre and watch the film. He was crazy about cinema. And in the 1930s, 
when Indian cinema began to speak, he began to observe that as well. In 1935, the entire TKS brothers troupe was hired by a film production company for creating the film Menaka. Krishnan acted as the comedian in that film. Thereafter came Sati Leelavati, then came Vasanthasena. In all these films, Krishnan was the comedian and he was noticed. It was in Vasanthasena that he would meet his future second wife, T.A. Maduram. Like him, she too was extremely talented and had come up the hard way. The two would then team up and act together for the rest of their lives. Krishnan soon began an independent production company called Ashoka Films. He would make independent comedy tracks which could then be fitted into films that had been produced elsewhere. He was greatly in demand among all the producers and directors because they knew that he would liven up any film that was given to him. He was very much in demand and hugely successful. He was earning a lot of money. When everything was going well for him, there suddenly came a dark shadow. In the 1940s, Lakshmi Kantham was a muckraking journalist who began magazines such as Indunesan and Cinema Dood. In this, he would claim to be exposing the shenanigans of all the film stars, Carnatic musicians and prominent people of Tamil Nadu society. The public loved him, but those who were featured in it hated him. In 1944, on a dark evening in November, Lakshmi Kantan was brutally attacked in General Collins's road, Veperi. He went with a knife sticking in his abdomen to the police station, lodged a complaint and was admitted in the general hospital where he died two days later. The murder of Lakshmi Kantan came up for trial and sensationally, M.K. Tyagaraja Bhagavatar, N.S. Krishnan and S.N. Sri Ramulu Naidu were arrested as the principal accused. The trial went on for a long time, draining the finances of people like Krishnan, M.K. Tyagaraja Bhagavatar. Eventually, S.M. Sri Ramulu Naidu was pronounced innocent, while Krishnan and Tyagaraja Bhagavatar were held guilty. The case went up to the High Court, where the sentence was confirmed for life imprisonment. They were admitted into the central prison in Madras. The case then went on appeal to the Privy Council, which then sent it back for reconsideration to the High Court. During all this period, 30 months went away. Madhuram began to act in plays along with S. V. Sahasranamam, who was a great admirer and associate of N. S. Krishnan, in order to keep the home fires burning and also to fund Krishnan's trial. When the judgment came out at the end of 30 months in the High Court, Krishnan and Tyagaraj Bhagavatar were released. It was characteristic of Krishnan that he would hold a public meeting just outside the prison and talk humorously about life in jail. People just loved it. At that time, a film Paithyakaran was going to be released and a role was made for Krishnan in the film. And he composed a song on the joys of prison life. This was the song that he would sing. And in that he would talk about how food was always available on demand. If you fell ill, there was a doctor who was coming to take care of you. How they cleaned your entire system of evil thoughts. How you had to go to sleep at proper hours. At the end of which Madhuram will ask him, the way you are talking about it, it looks as though all of us should go and have a stint in prison. That was Krishnan. He could transform anything into a happy occasion. Having come out of prison, Krishnan went back to all his favorite activities, acting in plays, acting in films and being involved in social reform. He was a very close associate of Tandai Periyar and Anna Durai and funded their activities. In fact, he funded many things. He gave money generously to everybody all the time. And he continued to remain in demand. The famed SS Vasan came to him when Gemini's Chandralekha had to be released and a comedy track had to be incorporated in it. It doesn't feature in the Hindi Chandralekha or in the English version Chandra, but it features in the Tamil version alone. And in that, Krishnan sings a wonderful nonsense rhyme which is based partly on the Italian gondoliers in Venice. Rambai rabari labari o muril haya Lambari labari a lapar 
रिया रिया लंबई गरियो मुरिया आई लो उपकरिया मा दैट्स द सॉन्ग इट डजेंट मीन एनीथिंग बट इट स्टेड बैक इन पीपल्स माइंड्स फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स दिस वॉज द मैजिक ऑफ कृष्ण in every film that he acted in every play that he performed he created social relevant messages against casteism against illiteracy against alcoholism he did everything that he could to spread the message krishnan worked very very hard indeed but he had to work hard the money had all been spent in his multiple acts of generosity and in fighting his legal cases i must get back to that house That house was built in Nagar Kovil in 1941 when Krishnan and Madhuram were at the height of their earning powers and popularity. Madhuram built a house in Sri Rangam at the same time and she named it Krishna Bhavanam and Krishnan built his house in Nagar Kovil and named it as Madhuram Bhavanam. It was the first house in the entire Travancore kingdom to be built with reinforced concrete, cement and mosaic. people came from all over the countryside to see this wonder they took photographs with krishnan in that house it was like the selfie of those times musicians came and performed over there that was the grand edifice that that property was during his time on earth post the release from prison krishnan produced some films as well in 1951 he made the movie manamahal which introduced padmini as a heroine to tamil cinema and even in that there is a play where he and maduram are comparing what life is in 1950 imagining what life is going to be in 1960 in 1950 life is full of shortages poverty corruption and krishnan imagines that life is going to be wonderful in the 1960s and there is a lovely song o rayirathi tollayirathi ambadu arvadu nadagam ஆடும் எங்களை ஆதரிக்க வேணும் அறிஞர் எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் தட் இஸ் த சாங் சேட்லி கிருஷ்ணன் நெவர் லிவ் டு சி நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டி ஹி பாஸ்ட் அவே இன் நைன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி செவன் ஹி வாஸ் ஜஸ்ட் ஃபார்ட்டி நைன் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் அ லாட் ஆஃப் த ஹேபிட்ஸ் தட் வி நார்மலி அசோசியேட் வித் த சினிமா வேர்ல்ட் வேர் வித் ஹிம் டூ அண்ட் தட் ப்ராபப்ளி அக்கவுண்டட் ஃபார் இஸ் ஷார்ட் லைஃப் பட் ஹி ரிமெயின்ஸ் இம்மார்டல் இன் ஹிஸ் ஒர்க் ஹி ஹேஸ் a statue for himself in tinagar he has a statue for himself in nagar kovil but when you go into nagar kovil you will find his smiling face in banners all over the town brightly smiling and telling you the power of positive thinking and laughter that was krishnan's message the house incidentally came up for auction because krishnan couldn't meet his debts it was mgr who saved the property and gave it back to the family that is the glory of ns krishna thank you very much